Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch, and we're back with yet another black and white overview. The fifth generation, of course, is my favorite generation of overviews, and I'm going to bring as many, if not every, um, SPL game that's not my own during the course of the regular season to playoffs. Um, I'm going to bring my own after the tournament. If you haven't seen them already, I've already covered the first two black and white games that weren't my own. I also played a bit of, uh, about a week ago as I'm recording this now. Um, this game happened earlier today. It's Saturday at uh, 7 p.m. This happened at like 5 p.m. between my good friend Pang and uh, one of the best players of all time, Sol Wind. Sol Wind, for those of you who don't know, is probably the most accomplished black white player on the face of the earth. He's won things like Smog on Classic. He's dominated Smog on Tour when black white was in it. He won a black white cup. He's done very well on SPL, including going 9 0 one season in black and white. <coughs> And is honestly that's just a tip of the iceberg when it comes to him. He's not only helped, you know, really revitalize the metagame at certain points and bring up new strategies, but also he's just been a fearsome player, someone who always finds a way to win against strong opponents and this could be the case here. However, Pang is a very formidable opponent. While it's his SPL debut and he's not much of a tournament player quite yet, Pang is seen as a very respectable uh, name and idealist in the black-white uh, arena. He's been one of the most uh, noteworthy posters of sets and strategies, team builders, just in recent years. Um, he's built quite the name for himself. Well, this is his SPL debut and, you know, a lot of pressures on his shoulders against someone like Solon. I do not doubt his ability to really come up with the novel ideas and try and formulate strategies to help him maybe get an advantage. In this game, uh, we, two, we see two pretty standard structures. I'm a little interested to see um, what Peng is going to do in terms of sets on this team. Scarf Kelio seems the most obvious to me, which we're going to switch to his side, just look at that. But it could also be Scarf Politoed with a, uh, a non-choice Kelio, even a Specs Kelio. The thing is, Solent historically, one of his few weaknesses as a black white player is that he doesn't always prepare so well for Kelio, but he finds ways to outplay it. And recently, he's also been a bit more jealous, and so... It'll be interesting to see if he's able to really, um, Pang is able to capitalize on that. But this time around, he's facing Asash, Alakazam, Sand, and Latios. So definitely can't prepare it this time. Good for Solon's behalf, but we'll see what Keldeo said it is. As for the rest of his team, it's pretty standard in terms of, uh, Rain. We see the Ferrothorn Tentacle, of course. Um, Thunderous T is one of the primary breakers. Seeing Jirachi alongside Ferrothorn, you don't see every day. Um, it definitely does, ex um, make some weaknesses harder, but it's very good against Psychic Spam. And in this matchup, you see Solon bringing triple Psychic, three Psychic types so, up. That's interesting there. I'm a little curious to see if that'll be a continuation for him or if we'll see um, if we'll see something else. Um, Solwind going on to his team. Again, this kind of looks like an older meta team. Um, Skarmory without uh, without Jellison is not something that I like too much, but I know Solwind has used that and other black-white players have used it a lot and with a great deal of success. The key is that while Skarmory can't keep things up against Tentacruel, the combination of Sand and other hazards from things like Gliscor or Tyranitar and the Psychic types can really overwhelm Tentacruel. In particular, Renickless just sits down it. Now, you are facing a, uh, a Jirachi, which can, you know, focus on checking or countering where Renickless spending on the sets, but also it has to be very tough for the occasion, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. All in all, um, it's pretty clear to me that Solwind is taking a more balanced approach, knowing he can outplay just about anything, whereas Pang is trying to be more of the aggressor, maybe with a win condition Jirachi, you know, cleaning with Scarf, Politoed, or, or, or uh, Keldeo, and breaking with Thunderous while setting the field up in his favor with the other two members of his team. This is not shocking. Solwind is definitely you know, more of a balanced player in Black White historically, but he is capable of taking risks in the game, and that's kind of how he gains his advantages. So it'll be interesting to see you know, how this uh, comes to fruition here. Let's go ahead and get into the game now. It's already been about uh, three minutes, four minutes. Yeah, let me just pause this and get into the game one second. All right, my bad. So yeah, let's get going. So right off the bat, actually lead-wise, I mean, I was expecting Gliscor or Latios from Solwind actually. Gliscor because it's a conventional lead and Toxic up is Toxic up is normally priority. But the issue with that is that it plays really well in something like Sub Thunderous or Combine Keldeo. So because of that, I was actually expecting Latios as a counter maneuver to one of those two. But Tyranitar is a perfectly fine uh, lead as well. As for uh, Pang, I'm expecting either Polytoed, Ferrothor, or Thunderous. Um, Thunderous is great in the lead position, but it does not do well against Latios. So otherwise, you know, if you expect Latios, Ferrothor would be great for that, or Polytoed set rain. Um, personally, on Solomon's team, looking at it, I'm thinking that it's probably not going to be Scarf on this build. In part because Pang isn't really well known for using things like Smurf and Hyper Offense with both, but also because you could run things like Thunder Wave or Psy Shock and Alkazam for that. Stealth Rock, Gliscor comes to, you know, help that. Could even be Double Rocks, Tar and Gliscor potentially. So, given that, I'm expecting a Culberberry in Power Fire. 
um, or even a life orb hidden part fire plus earthquake Latios from the soul inside as a lure to help with the Reuniclus and Alkazam opening the door for each other. The synergy there is really usually pretty strong. In fact, hidden power fire uh, uh, Latios is just kind of obvious in my eyes in this matchup. It, it's been something that's evolved in recent metagames and more and more common, so yeah. As for uh, Pang though, yeah, I'm expecting Politoed, Ferrothorn, or Thunder Siege, depending on what he predicts. Um, Ferrothorn's a fine lead. He does go with that. And now uh, there's no way it's like Choice Phantom Enterprise. He's always going to get a, a, a turn here. Now I'm surprised he didn't go for Hazards, but Solon perhaps a little greedily went for Rocks there with Tentacle being in the back and there only being one Rock Week Pokemon. I don't love that play. Um, I feel like taking all that damage from Tyranitar against a rain team with Thunderous T and potentially Kamai Drachi is not a great call. I guess he could not be Earthquake or Roar on this Tyranitar. If he's not one of those two, it doesn't really do anything against Kamai Drachi anyway besides maybe Crunch at it. And it could beat Sub CM, but it would never beat Wish CM then. So it really depends on what Solwyn's read on things is. I guess it's not the end of the world. But ultimately, I would have personally just went to, um, to Latios, Fin Fire, or Skarmory. Or Re Nicholas if it's Focus Blast. E either way, um, the damage isn't the end of the world. Rocks going up is helpful. Now here, I'm expecting Penny to click Knock Off or Switch Out. Um, he actually goes for Whip again. I feel like that's like kind of a passive turn. You knew that Solomon was going to go into something that wasn't going to not take big damage from Whip. Uh, there was no way turn to staying in, going risk anything, and taking more damage from Barbs. And it wasn't going to be Fire Blasting this team. That's a pretty dated Tyranitar. And I mean, things you need Fire Blast for, things like Garmory. You don't mind spikes on five of your team members against Ferrothorn. You don't mind spikes with five of your team members again, but also where Nicholas sits on it, Skarmory sits on it, Hidden Bar Fire Latios sits on it. So yeah, I don't know. I just I didn't love that power up. I felt like it was never gonna gain anything. 35% is not thing to scoff at into Reuniclus, but it's surely gonna be recovered on this team. And on top of that, getting a knockoff in Reuniclus would have been great. Hazard up would have been great. A switch into Pyodote could not only set the weather in your favor, but also with all the damage from Tranchar could do so for a long time. So I don't think Pang has did made a mistake there, but it kinda made me struggle a little bit. Like eh, I feel like I was kind of a lazy power up, if you will. Now turn 3, Jirachi is a fine play into your Nicholas, but then we see here 45% from Focus Blast. My oh my, that is substantial damage right there. That then hits a couple things. First and foremost, zero special defense on Jirachi. It's definitely going to be a Combinder given down. Combined on Rain is all fine and well. In fact, the full health Combine Bolt Beam Jirachi into this matchup, especially given that that's offensive your Nicholas, is one of the best matchups for it. In fact, I think it would do really well, especially given that it's very likely not going to be a choice Latios. Uh, moreover, Um, give me one second. I just gotta pause this. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, we're here. Okay, my, my bad, my bad. So yeah, given all that damage and the fact that the uh, the Drachi is now basically left at around half health, um, that's really bad for Pang. In part because it's one of the main answers to these three psychic types, but also in part because as a commander, it's actually a pretty potent one condition. And given that damage, I don't know. I mean, at this point, you can kind of corner yourself if you're Pang. And see, personally, again, I would have went to the Politoed. Initially, on his Nicholas, they get weather up, you don't really need Pyto to healthy, given that Tyranitar is already weakened, but also that would have been in the same situation. You would have been really cornered by Focus Blast. So, this Rear Nicholas is actually a really great bring by Solwind here, and highlighting how threatening offensive Rear Nicholas can be. Overall, I quite like that and the effect it's had in this early game, but let's see how that keeps going. Um, Combine is going to be the play. It is, in fact, a Combiner, as we said. So, yeah, 29% there. That's tough. Um, so yeah, now I assume he's going to go for an attack. We see a Thunder here into Gliscor. And now here's the thing. A, uh, a no special attack Jirachi can't kill a specially defensive Gliscor with plus one hidden power ice. I know, 70 base power hidden power ice that Generation 5 has. And being plus one and four times. But no, a special defensive Gliscor is what you set up and will easily kill with Earthquake. Coupled with the fact that if it's a, like, a bold physically defensive Jirachi, this also um is slower than some Gliscors. If Gliscor hits 240 or... Um, 250 for, or 260 for base 80s that are or 264 for the plus P base 70s, yeah. Um, so it really depends on a lot of things there. All in all though, um, someone felt calm just going for the Earthquake here knowing he lives that, and the, uh, the Thunder's T came in on that Earthquake. Great play from Pang, but getting nothing but losing all the damage on the Jirachi is a humongous setback. Hidden Power Ice is going to take out the Gliscor here with crit. Um, if it's like max special attack, a really offensive, that didn't matter. If it's like min, it could have been a roll. I'm not sure in the spreads, honestly, but either way. Now, here's a play that I really disagree with, and a great play from Solwind. So, again, at this point in the game, you still have a full health Politoed. And you have a Jirachi that's weakened and not going to do much. Latios, again, it's almost definitely going to be a lore set. 
Hidden Power Fire makes all the sense in the world to me, but worst case is tr uh, uh, best case is just being tricked. Either way, Barrel Thorns are only last, your, your last line of defense against Psychics at this point, particularly the Latios and the Alkazam. Switching it hard in like this is just begging for whatever the Lord is to be set into play and come really destroy Peng here. And Solwyn hits the nail on the head there, gets Hidden Power Fire correctly, knowing that it's lower just because if he doesn't hit the Polythor, then he still can stay in and Draco Meteor it. But if the thing is, if he does that, and then he goes to, say, Tentacruel and Polythor afterwards, he can shrug off Hidden Power Fire, he can shrug off Draco um, in rain with Tentacruel as well. So that, that this is kind of like the worst case scenario. And see, I think Peng had to go above and beyond to play his way out of the hole that Solwyn's great strategy put him in. But... I think he kind of just let it happen. He let himself get kind of walked all over here. Hidden Power Fire there. Huge gain for Solon. All of a sudden, Solon's way ahead of the game. Draco's even going to take it out there. That all of a sudden means that both Steel types are either dead or very weakened against Triple Psychic. Tentacle Short can come in here. You can get that spin off. But, I mean, now what? Rio Nicholas is, is just chilling. I mean, I don't love that. I don't know about you. 19% so, you know, there. Psychic is going to take out Tentacruel. That's, um... 5-4. Now, here's a play I really dislike from uh, Pang. So long as Sturge is intact, Skarmory is useless against Polythroid, useless against Thunder Drash, useless against Caldeo. You might as well just attack. Because now Whirlwind always is going to happen, so it's just a waste of turn there. I feel like Thunder into Thunder would have been better, but it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, that insult injury, Pang is going to miss the Thunder there and go to Drachi. And again, I really like Pang's team, and I don't necessarily know if he objectively misplayed, but I feel like given his situation in the game, he had to maybe be a step further ahead than he was. He had to make those plays that he needed to get turns right. He had to take risks, and I think that he didn't. Or maybe he took the wrong ones altogether, and that's pretty tough. Ultimately, unsurprisingly, perhaps at this point, Solwind is going to walk away with his victory. It's too little too late for Pank to mount any sort of comeback. Well, he can do some nice damage, maybe get a kill or two. It's just not going to be enough. Lattice comes in every time he gets a kill here. Roost up on the Drachi just to have an extra life against the Caldeo potentially. But Caldeo also revealed it was slower than the... Uh, Caldeo revealed it was slower than Lattice with sand damage too. So that means it's Scarf Polytoid. Scarf Polytoid can't do this here. Um, especially not in sand. And that's going to be that. We're going to see Surf take out the Drachi. Sure, Skull's here. Nice damage. But ultimately the Polytoid is going to be dead spikes. And yeah, it's just going to be too little too late. Someone is ultimately going to walk away with a... Uh, a 25 or 26 turn victory. It's actually Piapa by Kelly, which is a cool bring. So that's been using it more recently. But yeah, a 26 turn, 2 0, decisive victory against Pang. Good um, good game. Really well played on Solon's part. Probably one of the best played games of week one thus far. And I mean, why would anyone be surprised at Solon? He's one of the best players in the world. As for Pang, definitely not um, the best looking debut, but I like the team. I, I think that he's going to bounce back strong. He's one of the stronger minds for the game. And it'll be interesting to see how he's able to really um, put that off. Uh, come back into motion next week um again really big fan of both these two players so excited to see them play hopefully we'll see more of them in the coming weeks be sure to like comment subscribe you know the drill and until then hope you all have a great day okay bye